Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Golgari Tampering. Welcome back everybody to another standard gameplay video. Hope you guys are doing exceptionally well today. Hopefully your weekend's going great and you did not miss the collection update series that we did yesterday. We had an absolute blast. We got to feature some really amazing cards as well. And so I do encourage you guys to go check that out. It will also be linked at the end of this video, but let's talk about today's deck guys. It's a Golgari Cemetery Tampering deck. So Cemetery Tampering, if you don't know, uh, part of the hideaway cycle in Streets of New Capenna, and truthfully not a card that we've really been able to kind of make anything around up until, you know, today. We And not that we couldn't, it's just we didn't. Uh, and so I'm really interested to try this one out. This is uh, a self-mill strategy, obviously. Uh, so we do want to try and get 20 or more cards into our own graveyard, and then we can play the hideaway card uh, right off the bat with the cemetery tampering. So with all of that in mind, you'll notice obviously the Golgari theme featuring the old Rutstein, uh, Witherbloom Command, the Visionary, all of these cards to help self-mill our way into a freebie card. Uh, now, what kinds of cards do we want to be playing with this? Well, we do have things like Titan of Industry, which is obviously just a powerhouse creature. We have Harness Infinity, which is an absolutely hilarious card to run in this deck, uh, because you just get to swap your hand in your graveyard, all of a sudden you've got 20 cards in your hand and it's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, we've got Invoke Despair, which is hopefully going to gain us a lot of value, maybe even finish the game depending on where we're at at that point. Uh, but all of that to say, we've got some very powerhouse things that we are looking to do do with this. Now, uh, to help get us there, we play very similar. A lot of the play patterns are very controly. Uh, and with that in mind, we do have things like the Meat Hook Massacre, which is hopefully going to deal with a lot of the early creature spells. Culling Ritual, which is again going to help deal with a lot of the non-land permanents that we'd see, especially things like the Enchantments list, just getting all of it off the field and giving us mana that we can progress our own game plan right afterwards. Absolutely phenomenal. Uh, we do have Binding of the Old Gods, so obviously just a great catch-all. Uh, it also does help ramp us and give us our third color, which I say this is a Golgari deck. It is splashing, literally for one card, uh, which is Tabalt. Uh, we do want a little bit of red in the deck. Uh, I just basically love Tabalt, so I thought I'd throw it in here just to see how it works. Uh, I do appreciate the fact that we can bring it back, though, with things like Balaged Recovery. We've got Soul Transfer. All of these are obviously really good options for us. Uh, then we do, of course, have Shadows Verdict as well. Again, keeping in mind... We want to exile as much as we can, and so we do feature a lot of exile mechanics here just because we do really want to make sure that we're permanently getting rid of everything. Uh, worth noting as well, we do have a couple dig ups, uh, which are obviously great for fetching our lands. We do have a basic mountain and then of course forests and swamps that we can bring out with it. Or, uh, hopefully, more, more often than not, the goal is to just basically pull whatever big card we need to help finish the game. Uh, so we've got a lot of options here, a lot of recursion, a lot of really interesting pieces. Uh, this is my version of this list, I will say. I did use a lot of inspiration, including MTG Malone, who we feature a lot on the channel because he obviously does some amazing deck builds. This is my own version of it, though. I want to try my own out. Uh, and just see how we do. Uh, and so with that in mind, I just want to say this is going to be a learning experience, but we're going to have a blast doing it, guys. I really appreciate you all watching. Let's go ahead. Let's jump right in. Let's see how it goes. All right, guys, and here we are for game number one. How do we feel about this hand? Uh, truthfully, not that bad. It's a little slow, I know, uh, but it actually does feature a couple of really good removal spells and importantly, the old Rutstein, which is going to help us get kind of the, the major game plan going. Uh, we can lead with this, the uh, the Proving Ground here, which of course is our tapped land, but it also just gives us the uh, the ability to play whatever we want later on. Uh, and here we just get to double up on it. So uh, thankfully the opponent really isn't doing too much so far, uh, which is great for us. I will go ahead and try for the old Rutstein. They could very easily have a, a burn spell here, but it is at least going to get the mill going. Yeah, Infernal Grafts, so that'll take care of it. <clears throat> we do get a treasure token out of the deal, though, which, hey, I'm good with. <clears throat> nice. Okay. Um, so, again, we because we have soul transfer, um, <clears throat> we actually have some options here. We could also just dig up uh, at some point if we wanted to. I, uh, I think we're going to go this route, though. I'm actually just going to go ahead and... Uh, hmm. 
I think it's gonna have to be this. As much as I'd rather blow up the Fable, the trick is if they do uh, get the attack in with that, they could just drop like a gold span dragon this upcoming turn. I'd rather them not do that. Uh, and so we're gonna kind of force them into playing a fair-ish game uh, in terms of mana. Uh, and hopefully that works out for us. We do have the tampering in hand, by the way, so we are gonna wanna get that down uh, as quickly as, not maybe not as quickly as we can, but uh, certainly at some point that's gonna be the goal. Okay, another Fable. Uh, they also did not discard to draw further into the deck, which is kind of a, a tell that they probably have a really good hand. Uh, so a little scary there. Let's go ahead and pull a green source. Phenomenal. Let's do this. Uh, so I think the play is just going to be this, right? So we can Soul Transfer. Uh, we exile this, and we pull back the old Rutstein. And then we actually do just get to play the old Rutstein here as well. So I feel like that's a pretty solid turn. Again, Soul Transfer, such a great card in this uh, in this build because it not only exiles, not that it mattered that much with the token, but uh, in general, of course, that is helpful. But it also uh, brings stuff back for us, which is huge in self mills. So very, very happy to see that. And we'll see what the opponent's looking to do this turn. Certainly this could be a very scary turn, so... Let's, uh, fingers crossed, hopefully not lose out to anything too crazy. Okay, it's an Anvil deck. Fully expected Anvil. Um, I s mentioned Goldspan Dragon earlier. Obviously, that's not a card you're going to run in Anvil, but uh, that's certainly, I think, the biggest threat on five, and so I was a little worried about that. Uh, looks like the Anvil, though, is definitely going to be the, the bigger play. The Culling Ritual, huh? Uh, I do really like the Culling Ritual. Um... So this would kill all of them and give us enough mana. So yeah, I think I'm going to do that. It does kill our blood tokens here, worth noting. Um, but I'm actually kind of okay with that. So mostly we just don't want that anvil to, to stay on the field at this point. Um, and this does give us the mana to play that cemetery tampering. Okay, so they're going to deadly dispute. This is actually kind of fine. Um, Specifically because this still is going to go away. They draw two cards, but they don't get to keep the, the treasure token. Now, if they can use it this turn, that's obviously different. But. All right. Uh, sure. It's fine. Let's go ahead and play our cemetery tampering here. What do we want to pull? Um, actually, don't know. Uh, this is a bit tricky. Might just be cemetery tampering number two. Could also be the soul transfer. I could see that being quite good. Uh, but I think cemetery tampering might just be the play here. Um, I'm actually going to wait on that. So this mills us some cards and then allows us to bring you know certain things back, which I, I feel might just be useful. Uh, we're kind of topping out our mana, right? Like we don't have a ton that we need to actually pull here. And we can just dig up at any point. So, OK. Um, so they do hit the dig up. That's annoying, but not the end of the world. Uh, and we do just have a free block here unless they can kill it. So yeah, uh, Shadow's Verdict would not go amiss here. It would exile our own old Retstein, of course, but that's okay. All right, so we do get that. Yes, we will certainly, ooh, okay. There's a Valky in there and I do really like Valky. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's go ahead and do this for sure. Uh, it's going to keep milling us. We get to pull back the Valky. Um, and I actually do think I'm just going to go ahead and do this now. Uh, as probably unexciting as that looked, uh, the important thing is now we can drop this Valky. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we do need a land. But if we get a land or if we mill a land from the top of our deck, we're actually going to be in really good shape here. So... Let's see if they just go for the kill on the uh, old Rutstein with the... Oh, they're going to Voltage Surge. Okay. Sure. Seems good. Uh, so that's going to be quite a bit of damage for sure. Uh, and they have an Anvil, which is certainly scary. Uh, but we'll see. We will see. That's a lot of damage. Nine is certainly a little scary. Uh, but we do have... A f Again, if we get a land off the top, we've got Titan of Industry. Uh, do we want to mill? Yes, because we are very close. Okay, land off the top. 
I am very happy with that. All right, let's go ahead and drop the uh, Titan here for obvious reasons. Now, uh, I do think we have to kill the Anvil. Uh, I don't think we've got too many other options there, and I think it might just be a shield counter. Um, the reason being, they have no mana right now, and if they want to kill this, it's going to be a little tricky for them uh, because they can't just like burn it out or anything crazy like that. So we'll we'll see how this goes. They are going to exile from the graveyard, probably. No, I'm a little curious as to why they <laughs> they turn that into a creature, but okay. Uh, I was gonna say, that's none of this seems like a very good attack, actually, uh, because now they can't copy this, uh, which is pretty important, uh, in my opinion. Alright, let's go ahead and do this. Alright, uh, a little unexciting to hit another cemetery here, of course. We kind of knew that going into it, though, so that's fine. Alright. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. We're just gonna go ahead and Tabalt. Not a huge reason not to, I don't think. Um, I will just exile one of these, actually. Uh, mostly to keep the pressure off. I think at this point that's more important. Uh, we don't really have to worry about too much at the moment, I don't think. But uh, they can obviously kill Tabalt at some point if they want. So if they activate the Hive and just double attack, obviously they're sacrificing a creature by doing that. But they can get Tabalt off the field, which is probably a pretty reasonable play for them. Uh, we are going to get a Shigeki next turn, most likely, uh, which isn't a huge hit or anything like that, but does give us some, some ways to deal with some stuff. Interesting. Okay, they're going to Voltage Surge. There's the Synthesizer. Sure. Okay. That's fine. I'm not really worried about that. Uh, they don't have a good attack here. We do get to consider pressuring them at some point here. Um, I'm going to decline, actually, on both of these. Uh, since we've already got the mill aspect going, I think I'd rather... Yeah, that's that's good. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and kill the Reflection. Um, and this does open up quite a number of plays for us. Uh, so we could start attacking in and doing a little more. And there we go. We got the win. All right. Sick. Guys, we did it. That's game one. Let's jump into game two. Let's see if we can keep it up. Check out this month's Patreon rewards celebrating our return to Dominaria. If you want to pick these up, feel free to visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, guys, and here we are for game number two. Uh, again, a little bit of a tricky hand, but I'm actually going to try it. Uh, normally, I would suggest probably don't keep this, though. Uh, this is a very heavy turn three play. Nothing but three drops and a seven drop is not what you want. The soul transfer is helpful, of course, uh, but in general, this is quite bad, so... Let's, uh, let's do this. I am going to go ahead and bulky here. Again, the soul transfer opens up the aggressive play of we can kind of just take stuff. <laughs> uh, and it's not all actually all that scary. So I'm kind of okay with this. Uh, we'll see if they just circle of confinement this turn, uh, which is a perfectly reasonable play. Yep. Um, that makes it a little bit trickier because obviously that does exile. But we do, again, have things like culling ritual or... Uh, the uh, Binding of the Old Gods to deal with this later on, so we'll, we'll see. Uh, excellent. Alright, I'm just going to go ahead and Cemetery Tampering. Don't see a huge reason not to. Uh, the question is, what do we want to take here? Uh, is it just Invoke Despair, or is it Shadow's Verdict? I could see either way. I think given their hand, Shadow's Verdict is probably the better option. They've got quite a number of, like, low ground things that Shadow's Verdict is going to hit, and it exiles, which I think is very crucial for us, so we're certainly going to go that route. We do have the double tampering here, too, which just means that we can really aggressively do this if we need to, but let's see. Opponent definitely overcommitting a little bit to the board here, which is great. Uh, let's let's keep that going. <laughs> okay, Balaged Recovery is not bad. Um, Let's see. It's not ideal, though, either, I'll be honest. Um, okay, uh, so I am going to do this. We're going to basically just force the issue as best we can here. I'm going to play this out for the land side. We're not really in the interest of taking things out of our graveyard at the moment, and I'd rather have the land. Um, we've got some really good options underneath these cemetery tamperings, so I'm really hoping we can get these off, but again, they've got a pretty solid board state at the moment, so 
We need to find a way to do this, uh, maybe sooner rather than later. I'm not sure the best way we're going to be able to. Culling Ritual would be amazing, honestly, but we do kind of have to commit to milling ourselves quite a bit here. Okay, uh, Binding of the Old Gods is semi-helpful, so yeah, I am going to, I'm, I'm going to throw this out there. Let's go ahead and get the, uh, the Fang out. Uh, the reason being, obviously, it's the most powerful creature on the field, and we're just in the interest of stalling. Uh, they can obviously do quite a bit this turn, so hopefully, ooh, hopefully, hopefully. This is, uh, this is a tricky one. I don't think we're in great shape, obviously, but, yep. Man, a natural, well, we don't even have the lands. Yeah, I was gonna say a natural shadows verdict would be amazing, but I don't think it's gonna do it here. So, let's go ahead and take the, uh, the action. And again, unfortunately, it's not going to be enough, but... Oh. Does that do it? It definitely helps. Yeah. Okay, so... <laughs> uh, yeah, that was really good. <laughs> unfortunately, nothing to hit there. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to exile this. <laughs> wow, uh, that was really good. Okay, sick. Uh, so, Shadow's Verdict, unfortunately, not really going to be helpful. Um, but the Binding of the Old Gods will be. <laughs> okay. Sick. <laughs> uh, so we'll take the action. We'll play the Binding. <laughs> uh, which is going to take out the Hollowed Haunting. Wow, that was really good. Um, I'm going to decline here. We're going to decline to play that. Um, as much as I would love to, obviously, that's not what we're looking to do yet. Go ahead and get this down. Uh, what is in our graveyard? There is an old red scene, but that's it. So, unfortunately, I think we just attack in. <clears throat> Fortunately, we do actually know their entire hand, which is a single card. So, we'll see what they decide to do. Okay. So, we do have the Invoke Despair play available, actually, to, uh, just kind of get them with this. Uh, again, I'm, I'm gonna decline... Uh, all of that at the moment. Um, that's a freebie card for later, but I think we just kind of have to make sure this Hollowed Haunting doesn't go anywhere. So let's... <laughs> uh, yeah. Keep uh, keep the attacks rolling in. Uh, the nice thing about the Witherbloom Command too, as well as the Titan of Industry, is there is actually a very small sub-theme of life gain out of the deal, uh, which is surprisingly helpful. <laughs> Uh, in these kinds of moments where you're really just not wanting to die. <laughs> uh, let's make sure we decline everything. All right, phenomenal. Uh, and now... So let's see, we know for a fact uh, that they have the... the Doom Scar. Let's attack him first. Let's do this. Um, let's game five and shield counter. We'll shield counter here. I actually kind of want them to kill the Tabalt, uh, mostly because we can soul transfer it back and then play it for Valky. Uh, that's fine. That's not super great. Um, the fact that they played that's a bit odd, actually, too. Okay. Sure. Great. Well done. Uh, so, we can just win, right? Potentially? Yeah, definitely. So we actually have the win. Um, decline, decline. We could have taken it, but we don't need to. Alright, so the way we win, soul transfer, this. Uh, unfortunately, we don't control an artifact, so we can't do both here. Um, we know what their hand is, so like at this point. Uh, is this? Yeah, sick. Destroy that hit them and now we just attack and win guys i'm liking this deck that's all i'm saying this seems really fun <laughs> that's two wins guys we are gonna go for a third game really quick let's see what we can do all right guys here we are for game number three and i think we keep this uh based on we've got meat hook <clears throat> binding and shadows verdict i feel like this is pretty reasonable to keep uh what we might want to do is i'm gonna i'm gonna preemptively dig up here um, I know this seems a little strange, but what it allows for us to do is not worry about that double black mana just in case. It is also just, you know, a deck thinning mechanic, uh, and so I feel like it's probably worth it. Um, 
Uh, do we just go ahead and do this? I think maybe not. I think we let them kind of run with this. We can just kind of hold off. <coughs> they, they hit us for a damage, but that's not really a huge concern. They might have a deadly dispute here. Nope. Okay. Yeah, that I would much rather be hitting other than the... Uh... So now we can just meat hook for one. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Um, I think this is probably more reasonable. It hits two of their things, and obviously this becomes... I mean, it's just going to die. Uh, they aren't going to be able to play the Infernal Grass, so that's going to get lost. Uh, they do get a land out of the deal, but that's it. So yeah, that's fine. And now we've got the, uh, the Binding of the Old Gods that can come down and kill the Tainted Adversaries. So now we're at just like a perfectly reasonable position to, to kind of deal with everything. So we gain a life out of the deal. For all of the stuff that they have done, we are still at um, 20 life, which as it turns out is exactly what we needed. So let's go ahead and kill the Adversary. Uh, it looks like this is just Rakdos Zombies. Which is kind of an interesting build. A lot of times I I tend to think uh, Demir Zombies is a little bit stronger, but maybe that's incorrect. I don't know. This is kind of interesting. I just haven't seen it. Uh, I guess not entirely Zombies, but just kind of interesting. Um, all right, so let's throw that down. And I think we will just go ahead and get the, the Cemetery Tampering down. I don't see a huge reason not to. Uh, this just seems like a really good kind of long-term plan. Uh, especially given they've only got a Shambling Gas, right? Like, they really don't have that much. Uh, now the question is, do we want to activate this? I think not. Again, the Shambling Gas is not the biggest concern. If they were to find another uh, Jadar, I think that would be more concerning to me. Um, so, yeah, I'm not, I'm not super concerned with that. Okay, Volky is in the graveyard. Um, culling Ritual. So that does kill our own meat hook, which is worth noting. Um, alternatively, yeah. Um, so we can just shambling gas or shadows verdict, not shambling gas. Excuse me. I think I'm gonna do that. It goes ahead and gets all their stuff out of there. You don't really have to worry about it as much. Um, that tenacious underdog is completely useless now. We've got the answer to J Jadar. Excuse me, that's very difficult for me to say for some reason. <laughs> um, so we'll happily mill some more cards. We did take our own Volky out of the graveyard, that is worth noting. Um, but again, I, I don't particularly mind. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do this. And we get to mill, we'll kill Jadar. Um, they might have, like, a deadly dispute or something, I don't know. Oh, nice, there's a very good card. Um, I think we'll take the layer. So the layer represents, obviously, a way to win the game, um, which we do want at some point here, obviously. <laughs> uh, and so it seems like that's probably just going to be the right call. And now, again, we've kind of got an insurance policy working our way uh, into fruition, so... Uh, by that, I mean we've got the Shadows Verdict under the land, or, or under the tampering. Uh, we've got a layer of the Hydra as a, the inevitability side of things. Like, we're kind of working our way towards not really having to worry too much. Um, a Harness Infinity would be kind of sick. Um, yeah. Non-legendary cards from your graveyard to your hand. Okay, so... Uh, let's see, so we can channel this out. Um, let's see, one, two, one, two, three, four. So X equals two. What do we want to pull? Maybe this, uh, just to finish the game. And then probably this. Uh, keeping in mind, I understand we're limiting our graveyard usage with the cemetery tampering technically here, uh, but we're also giving ourselves, again, the inevitability of like, okay, no matter what you play, uh, we should have an answer for it, uh, because Titan obviously kills artifacts and enchantments, Invoke Despair kills quite a lot of stuff, uh, and all they've got is a 2-2 decayed zombie on the field, so I'm not really stressing. <laughs> um, and we have all the mana in the world to play whatever we need to play, so this seems... Pretty reasonable. 
right? Um, yeah, we'll take the action. Okay. Let's do this. Um, I think we just go for this for now. Uh, like, I'd rather get the threat down and then invoke despair when we can follow up with a strong attack, I think. Uh, let's put a shield counter out and we'll just create a 4-4. Four four. Again, just trying to spread stuff out for the most part. Um, sure, that's fine. We still get the 4-4, four four, so I don't really care. That's totally fine. Um, and it gets the shield counter. That's an interesting little interaction. I didn't really think about that, but it does make sense that you select both, but because there isn't the Titan of Industry, you actually get the... Aha! <laughs> nice. Um, cool. That's perfectly fine. So we're going to kill that. Uh, and we also just have a giant layer of the Hydra. Oh, no. All right, hold on. Game froze. We'll be right back. All right. Sorry, guys. We are back. Uh... I hate when that happens. If anybody has an idea as to why that keeps happening, I have reinstalled the client multiple times, and for some reason that still is the uh, is the case. So, not 100% sure why. I'm actually going to decline. Let's go ahead and invoke despair first. Um, oh, 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 oh you beauty. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure why the the client keeps doing that. It's very frustrating, but that does happen every once in a while. Alright, so we get their meat hook off the field, which, let me be clear, isn't necessarily priority one. Uh, drawing cards is actually priority one for me at the moment, because I want to be outpacing them in, uh, in cards in hand. Uh, but more importantly, um, getting the meat hook, hook off of the field uh, offsets what they're trying to do, which is, funny enough, offsetting our own meat hook massacre. So this just kind of removes that possibility from, uh, from the equation. And so if something of theirs dies or something of ours dies, we still maintain all of the value uh, versus it being leveled out by the Meat Hook Massacre. Um, we could have also, to be clear, just attacked him with the giant layer of the Hydra, which truthfully would have been a much more reasonable play in the sense that uh, they're tapped out. So obviously they can't do anything. Um, so it would have been a very safe play to do, but we still get to um, probably attack in with something here. So I'm not that worried about it. Shirts 330. Sorry for uh, disconnecting from me, my friend. I'm hoping that you did not also disconnect. Um, guys, also, I just want to reiterate the point. Uh, I know the last couple weeks we have missed the Monday gameplay videos. Uh, I do apologize for that. Unfortunately, it's just been a busy, busy time. Uh, for the first time, though, in quite a while, I have been significantly ahead on videos, um, trying to take a little extra time at, at different times of the day that I can. Um, and uh, before and after work and kind of get some videos done. So I appreciate you guys being so supportive and patient. I know one person ended up commenting, just letting me know that, hey, you always need to take time for yourself. Don't stress about it. Uh, and I do appreciate that. I will say um, as a content creator and as a very schedule oriented person, uh, it's difficult for me to miss days. It really is. Uh, sometimes, unfortunately though, that difficulty translates into videos that probably aren't quite as exciting. Uh, and because I'm just trying to get something done. Uh, and so I do apologize, of course, but uh, I am, you know, just happy to be able to uh, to produce really, hopefully, engaging videos for you guys. All right, let's just attack with the Hive. Pretty easy. Um, and there we go. We got the win. Easy enough. The deck worked. That was undefeated, guys. Let's talk about this deck. All right, guys. So how do we feel about Golgari uh, Cemetery Tampering? Um, really good, actually. Uh, and I'm very happy to say, I will just point this out. A, I'm, I'm happy that I was able to put this deck together myself and didn't necessarily just like completely steal somebody else's deck. Not that I steal anybody. I try to credit everybody, of course. But uh, it is nice every once in a while to put uh, a deck together that I think is really fun and is really good. While I did take inspiration and some ideas from MTG Malone as well as others, uh, I do just want to say again, I, I went a slightly different direction. They had some reanimator elements and things like that. I chose not to do that. Uh, I like this version. I think it was really good. Obviously, it did go undefeated. While I don't think that will obviously always be the case, um, it is very strong. <laughs> uh, in practice, which I did only practice one game, as you guys know, I usually practice a game or two prior to recording, just so I've got a good idea of how the play patterns work. And of course, in this case, I'm testing a new deck uh, that I'm putting together. So uh, I did still get the win. So for all of you guys saying it's not undefeated because I lost in practice or whatever, first of all, I 
good for you if you want to comment that that's cool but uh <laughs> this one did actually win every single time i have played with it uh, which is only four times so all that to say, uh, it's powerful, it's really annoying for the opponent to deal with, and Cemetery Tampering, surprisingly fun card. Uh, I think it sets up the insurance policy uh, of, especially in a build like this, you've got sweepers, you've got ways to deal with stuff that I don't think you would all normally have. Uh, and so, yeah, I think this is sick. I loved it. Uh, highly recommend trying it out, guys. I think it's an absolute blast. I know some of these cards are probably going to be rotating out soon. I didn't look through how rotation-proof this is, but... Um, still a blast. So I encourage you to check it out, try it out, see if you like it, make some changes to it, but hopefully enjoy it along the way. So thank you guys again for watching. I really do appreciate it. Have a fantastic Sunday. I'll see you guys again soon.